Hey there, Tubes. As you can see, I'm out here after Roper again. I got some time to work on it. It is Tuesday, as you know. Election day in the States. But, uh, got some time to work on this. So I'm going to stick a carburetor on it. I'm going to hook up the vacuum line. But like I've been saying, I'm not hooking up the fuel line. I got to uh, take the back fenders off uh, to get at the rear end anyways. So while I'm at it, I'm going to take the gas tank out. It's a plastic gas tank, so I should be able to fill it with water and rinse it out really, really well. and Or pour what's in there, put some water in there and pour what's left and put the water into some jugs and have it disposed of. So that's what I'm up to for right now. Also, I made a discovery. The amp meter is junk. But that same size as the one that would be on the Craftsman and the one that's on the uh, on the MTD uh, Mastercraft Racer over there, the uh, off-roader. So I should be able to get a new one exactly like this. I may even get a chrome-faced one like this one. But the newer modern ones only take a positive and a ground. This one takes uh, two positives. So basically the positive goes to it and then it goes back out. So I'm, I'm rewiring it anyway. So that was the same setup how the... Uh, how my old Bolins was, if you remember the Bolins when I put the gauge back in it. Remember when I bought the Bolins, it, did, it wouldn't start by the key. You could jump start it, even though the battery was perfectly fine. It's because the, uh, they, someone pulled the gauge out and I just had to jump it and then I put a new gauge in and I had to ground the new gauge. So, anyways, like, uh, like I said last night, I do got spark on this. I got pretty good spark. I did do the uh, business card trick. It didn't work, so I just did it by eye, and I got a really good spark. So I had it by eye, so I figured I'd try the business card technique, see if I could get better spark. It didn't work. So, anyways, I'm got the carburetor ready. I'm gonna put that on. I gotta find a gas tank with some fuel line. Probably just gonna set it up here in the hood, uh, safest spot for it, away from the engine, away from anything that uh, if it does catch fire, I can put it out without the gas tank uh, going up. But it should run. Um, it's got really good compression. It's got really good spark on both sides. And then just want to basically get it fired up. And I want to test this rear end so I can go and sell the rear end. I can say to the person, yes, the rear end works, or no, the rear end needs to be rebuilt. Random dog, Lucy. Random puppy dog. So, anyways, that's, uh, so I guess stay tuned. Okay, as you can see from, uh, the smoke in the air, I had an old LaPose twin running. Yep, I got it to fire. So I'm going to see if it'll fire up again. I'm leaking gas out the uh, fuel pump on my carburetor, so it won't run for very long. Also, I have no throttle control. So let's try to see if we'll start up. Try this one hand. Can't do it one hand. So. It's shaking around a lot because it, uh, it's missing two front motor mounts, so I don't want to let it run for very long. Also, I never checked the oil, so I still got to check the oil in it, and I got to replace those two bolts. What fell was the uh, dash support, so it runs. It sounds really good, other than other than shaking, and the gas leak has stopped, which is good. I figured uh, once the gasket gets wet a bit and gets the vacuum in there uh, from the engine running it would stop it from leaking and it has so sounds good I gotta figure out how to replace those front two bolts I gotta find a couple bolts I might steal them out of that engine right there because I know those are two that will fit so oh, drop the ratchet pick that up okay I'm having one minor issue though while it's still clicked on and I got power I'm not gonna start it having an issue I had to cut out uh, part of the original circuit for the charging system let me find it here mm, it's pretty stinky in here because on these uh, ropers it exits the exhaust out the right hand side so when you're sitting on it, out the right hand side 
see if I can find the piece I'm looking for. This right here. I think I had to cut this piece out for a couple reasons. It um, was there must be a fault somewhere along here because when the ignition was on, I could not get any power going up to the headlight circuits. It's working now, but I'll show you. This is the charging wire right here. Every time you go to hit it to a power source, it sparks. So I don't know if that's if the charging system is grounding out and it might need a new stator or what. If anyone can give me an idea on what's going on here. I've always hooked the charging system straight up to either the battery. It does the same thing on the battery as well. Either hook them straight up to the battery or to the um, to the uh, I've hooked them to the solenoid battery side. I've hooked them to the headlights. I'm worried if I hook them to the headlights it's going to spark again because as soon as the headlights come on. So if anyone has any ideas on how to how to repair that please let me know It'd be greatly greatly appreciated so anyways this runs it actually first time it fired up it fired up immediately I did know it was loose to begin with um, actually just after I put the carburetor on I moved I pushed the uh, carburetor sideways a bit and the whole engine moved so I've known about that for a little while now for about 20 minutes not even sorry not even but anyways it, it sounds really good it's running really good so I got a good motor here so perfect I've got perfectly running opposed right here now I'm going to work on the fuel lines probably at the end of the month I'll get the fuel line new fuel line from the tank up to the engine and hopefully start drawing off the rear tank that's my that's my idea I'd love to start drawing off that tank um, I wasn't running long enough I don't want to run it long enough to test the rear end um, but I got to test that rear end still and I know these actually did come with a 5 speed as I've, I've seen a few of these that did have the 5 speed and I've seen a few of these that had the 5 speed with the high and low or it was a 3 speed with the high and low so I know a 5 speed or what I want to do is put a 6 speed in it it should work but obviously the center piece there will have a hole in it where a shifter will come through and I'll try to do something there to patch that up to make it look better but the only thing I'm thinking about is how I'm going to do the drive line to the back uh, with the belts and pulleys how I'm going to make it work I'm going to do a single belt to the rear end I'm just going to figure out different ways to make that work so I don't know if I'm going to work on the rest of the engine today uh, or not I just got to put a couple bolts in it so the engine doesn't flop around also I never checked the oil. I think I checked it once, but heh, good thing I let it run long, it's out of oil, so hopefully it does not leak oil. Also, one thing I noticed on this, which is actually pretty good, when you're running it and driving it, you actually got a foot rest right here next to the muffler. So you don't uh, burn your foot or melt your shoe or whatever. It's actually a pretty good idea. Um, pretty slick, I think. But, uh, Mr. Redneck Josh pointed out, I don't know if he really pointed out how big the engine compartment was or if he was talking about this tractor, just about this tractor, he was saying something about a 2.2 liter, a GM 2.2 liter. A GM 2.2 liter four cylinder would almost fit in this engine compartment. If you're talking about that, yeah, it would almost fit in this engine compartment. If you look how big it is, how much room there is at the back of the engine, there's nearly 10 inches at the back of the engine. And from the front of the engine, like from the front of the carburetor up, there's like 12 to 14 inches. If maybe a little less, I might be exaggerating a little bit, but still, this has a huge engine compartment. To, regardless, it's crazy how much space they uh, left inside under the hood of these things. I believe all the ropers are like this, like these this style of roper. So, pretty big. Uh, they are very large tractors. So, anyways, that's that's it for the video. Um, Again, if anyone has any ideas about the charging system, please let me know. Um, I think the coil might be grounding out, so that's possibly why it's sparking like that. So, but to get the coil out, obviously I gotta take the flywheel off, and I'm not gonna be able to do that till the spring, because I have no air compressor till the spring. So my air compressor will not start unless I heat my shop up a lot. I might be able to get my air compressor to start. So, 
But yeah, um, that's pretty much it. So I guess I'll talk to everyone later. Please keep it redneck like always. And uh, please subscribe and comment.